This is a viewer's guide for the college football playoff rankings reveal show. As I record this on November 13th, a lot of people are upset about the rankings because there seems to be a double standard. There seems to be a failure to uphold the college football playoff committee, that nameless, faceless entity made up of inherently biased ADs and former coaches. There's a little bit of outrage about where some teams happen to be. Some are too high, some are too low. But I want to remind you, and a portion of this video is evergreen content. Maybe you're watching this during the 12-team era. Maybe you're finding this video like a time capsule, and the playoff has expanded to 16 or 24 or 64 teams. However many teams are in the playoff, when you're watching this, I want to remind you of something. I want to remind you of how this rankings reveal show and how the system works. Up until the playoff committee releases its final rankings of the year, right before the playoffs actually start and teams are seated and cemented for where they need to go. These rankings are not real. They have no bearing on reality. Outside of the score bug on ESPN, who has the rights to the college football playoff, where the committee's rankings show up on the bottom of the screen. These numbers have no impact on your life. They're not real. They're supposedly projections, forecasts about what the committee would do if the season ended today. That's what they say. But I'll give you a couple examples. Yes, I went to Georgia, but I can look at this objectively and tell you that the committee seems to be missing the mark on what they tell us they value. I'll look at two teams specifically, Texas and Georgia. Texas's best win of the year is what? Vanderbilt. Georgia's best wins of the year are Texas, you could argue Clemson, and they also have a couple of losses to currently top 10 teams, Alabama and Ole Miss, the two teams right in front of them. Now Georgia's number 12, and that means that if the season ended today, Georgia would be the first team out because Boise State, as the group of four school, group of five school rather, would take that 12th spot. Now, people are upset about this, and, and understandably so. Texas's strength of schedule is 55th in the country according to ESPN's own metrics. Georgia's strength of schedule according to those same metrics is number one. They've lost two games as of now on the road. Miami lost its first game of the year to unranked Georgia Tech, fell fewer spots than Georgia did. Georgia went from 3 to 12. Miami only fell, I believe, five spots to their ranking. So if you're upset, if you have all the rankings categorically ready for the playoff committee to spout off and tell them why they got it wrong, I want to encourage you that these numbers don't mean anything. It's a reality TV show. It is the television equivalent of engagement farming. If you're on social media, you may or may not know what that term means. It means you put out a ranking, you put out a take, you put out a post that intentionally or incidentally stirs up a large section of the community that follows you. I'll give you an example. Leading up to the 2024 Major League Baseball season, an account that is adjacent to Major League Baseball, may have been Major League Baseball itself, put out a post, an infographic, their rankings of the best second baseman in all of Major League Baseball. Now, I'm a big Braves fan, and the list neglected Ozzie Albies entirely. He wasn't on the list. Well, what do you think happened? A bunch of Braves fans, hundreds, maybe thousands of them, responded to this post, quote, tweeted it, shared it, and inadvertently carried the water for the brand of Major League Baseball, or whichever account put that ranking out. It went viral. It got a lot of impressions. It got a lot of engagement. Georgia, again, I will be up front and tell you, I'm a Georgia Bulldog. I went to school there. I got a degree from there. But I have noticed that Georgia and its fans often fall into this same trap. Coaching list in the preseason. Who's the best active coach in college football? If Kirby Smart's anywhere other than number one, 
that post is guaranteed to go viral with Georgia fans flipping out about it. Whether they're right or wrong, it doesn't matter. It's just what happens. Best stadiums is a big one that comes out in talking season, in the preseason. If Georgia is not in the top five or the top 10, heaven forbid, of those lists, then Georgia fans are going to inadvertently carry the water of that account, rinse and repeat any given fan base. It happens. It's just how it goes down. Well, these college football playoff rankings reveal shows are the same thing. They go against their own rules. They say they value strength of schedule, valuable wins, and bad losses are supposed to hurt you. Teams with bad losses don't get punished as much, it seems, in this latest ranking anyway. Teams with good wins don't get rewarded as much. It's all about who has fewer losses, which we were under the impression, as educated college football fans, shouldn't matter very much. But I want to encourage you, college football fan out there, up until those final rankings come out, don't get upset about this unless you're okay with gleefully, unwillingly carrying the water for the brand of the college football playoff committee. How do you solve the problem? Maybe you have fewer biased humans involved with this decision-making process. It's totally subjective. It's not like the NFL with strict division standings and seedings, and maybe one day we'll get there. But until that day, it's all up to a bunch of people in a room. We used to use computers. Maybe they got things wrong, but at least they weren't biased. Maybe one day we'll have a blend of the two, a happy marriage that hopefully doesn't devolve into college football's version of Skynet and bring the whole thing down. It's not perfect right now. There was never a guarantee that it would be. But whether the playoff expands or stays where it is at 12 teams, someone's going to get left out that should be in. Someone's going to have their hopes pumped up all season long by this committee, only for the rug to be pulled out from underneath them at the very end. Florida State. I mean, you could make the argument that the committee broke that program. They had the Seminoles at number four even before their quarterback got injured and had Seminoles fans thinking that they still had a shot to make the playoff in the four-team era. So someone's always going to be upset about that 11th seed. Somebody's always going to be upset about being the first team left out. But don't be the fan. Don't be the fan base that allows yourself to get sucked into that quicksand of arguing with a committee that will not argue back and doesn't care what you say and is honestly grateful and glad that you're arguing with them. Stay strong. Watch the playoff reveal show. Watch the rankings reveal show through that lens. Be where your feet are and have faith or hope, which are two different things in their own way that your team will take care of its business the way it needs to, and it won't come down to a boardroom decision as to whether or not they get to continue their season and hunt down a national championship trophy. God bless.